Welcome everybody. This video is going to explain ulcerative colitis in layman terms. Not everybody went to medical school, not everybody knows what ulcerative colitis is. So it's just going to be the basics of ulcerative colitis. So what is it? That's, that's the number one question about ulcerative colitis. It has a terrible sounding name. It sounds terrible. Well, let's break it down. Ulcerative, meaning you're going to have ulcers or ulcerations in the colon, colitis, colon, with inflammation, itis. That's the, that's the medical term for inflammation. So we have colon involvement. We see some ulcers. We see some inflammation. We're going to expect to see some possible bleeding, some pain, some cramping, uh, and increased bowel movements. So what is it? Well, it's going to be the inflammation of the mucosal layer. So the mucosal layer, I'm just going to explain here really quick. This is if you took your bowel looking straight at you and cut it. Cut it, one clean cut, and you're going to see different layers. You're going to see the inside layer, so in here is where your stool is formed. And then you're going to see this layer that's touching the inside, it's called lumen, or the inside kind of stool part. That's going to be your mucosal layer. Next, you've got some muscular layer where the X is, so you've got muscles because your bowels continuously contract. And then lastly, you have an outside coating called the serosa or the serosal layer. So for ulcerative colitis, we're just seeing inflammation of this inside layer where the stool is touching. Now, there's other diseases where you get different inflammations, but that's a little out of the scope of this video. So we see some inflammation of the mucosa. Now, typically, you're going to see rectal involvement. That is the number one sign for ulcerative colitis is rectal involvement. Crohn's disease doesn't typically involve the rectum, but ulcerative colitis does. Now, when I say rectal involvement, you're always going to have rectal involvement. You may have other areas of your bowel affected, but always you're going to see rectal involvement. You may see sigmoid involvement. You may see other parts too. So I'm going to draw a little picture here of, of the bowel. So you've got your anus right there, and you've got your rectum. Now your rectum is the tube that goes just above your anus, and you've got a little curve in your colon called the sigmoid, because it's an S shape. So here's our little S shape, so we take one turn, and another turn, and now we enter the descending bowel. Next, we're going to go across into our transverse bowel, and then down again into our ascending. Now when I say ascending, descending, I'm drawing it in reverse. Please remember, stool is going to go in this direction, meaning it's going to ascend, transverse across the body, descend, go through the little S sigmoid, down into the rectum, out the anus. So that's kind of the path that it's going to take. Now, before we go up to ascending, we're going to go through all of our small bowel, making all these loops and stuff. Um, but ulcerative colitis, colitis means inflammation of the colon. The colon is only going to be defined as from the rectum until you get to the cecum. So that anything between the cecum and the rectum is going to be your colon. So Inflammation is always going to start here in the rectum. And the red is going to stand for the inflammation or the colitis and the ulceration. So you may also see it extend into the sigmoid, and that may be it. But you may also see it extend even further and get worse symptoms of ulcerative colitis. It could involve the transverse, or it could just involve half of the transverse. But it's always going to go in a continuous fashion. So it's always going to involve the rectum, and then it's going to go in a continuous fashion throughout the rest of the system. All right, just kind of a little bit what it is. Now, let's talk about how do we diagnose ulcerative colitis. Now, I know not everybody here is going to become a doctor, but it is important to know why and how we diagnose ulcerative colitis. Well, how is simply a biopsy, meaning we're going to go in with a scope, so like we're doing a colonoscopy, and take a little bit of tissue from the inside. We're going to take some little clamps, and then take a little piece of this inside layer, the mucosal layer, 
and then pull it out. You may actually get a little bit more, um, a little bit bigger of a clip, depending on how big of a bite you take. But then we're going to pull that out. So we've got our little, you know, piece of tissue at the end of at the end of our probe. We're going to send it to a laboratory, and they'll tell us kind of what they see. When they send back the sample from the lab, you're going to see signs of chronic colitis. That's going to be a key word. Chronic colitis, meaning that inflammation of the colon has been going on chronically. This isn't just a one-time thing. This didn't happen acutely like yesterday. This, this inflammation change has been going on for a long time. You may also see cryptal abscesses. Abscesses. My spelling's not my strong point. Cryptal abscesses, meaning uh, it's going to be a kind of change that happens in your colon, typically when you have ulcerative colitis. And you may also see some cryptal uh, atrophy as well. So how does ulcerative colitis actually present? That's going to be a very important, uh, important thing. So some symptoms of ulcerative colitis. You're going to see increased bowel movements, possibly. Meaning, you know, an average person has one bowel movement a day. Um, some people go every other day. It kind of depends per person. However, in ulcerative colitis, you may see three bowel movements per day, four bowel movements per day, up to 10, 12, 15. You're going to see an increased number of bowel movements. Also, you're going to see bowel movement blood. Blood in the stool is never a good sign. It could be something as simple as a hemorrhoid. It could be, depending on age, diverticulosis, possibly. Um, but again, then you've got diseases that are more severe, like ulcerative colitis. And that can also present with blood in the stool. So this needs to get checked out, no matter what type of blood in the stool it is. You may also see stool changes. Stool changes meaning... Typically, a stool is a well-formed, kind of semi-solid, mostly solid uh, uh, particle. Now, in ulcerative colitis, the stools may be more loose. So you'll see a loose, kind of like diarrhea-type bowel movement with blood associated with the increased bowel movements as well. So those are kind of the more, a little more clinically useful findings. You may also see the abdominal pain because inflammation of the colon when there's stuff pushing against it, or, or even when the colon's clean, you're still going to see the abdominal pain because of this inflammatory change. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that cause abdominal pain, but you've got to be thinking big picture here. So, if you're, you're seeing a lot of these signs and symptoms, you should be kind of pointing towards ulcerative colitis, and that's why you need to take, have a colonoscopy done so they can get a biopsy, get a little pinch of tissue, send it to the lab, and find out what kind of changes are actually going on. Now, why do we care? It's because you can actually get complications. Now, there's one, there's a lot of different complications, but there are quite a few that are kind of like hallmarks of ulcerative colitis. So, the number one is going to be like, a, like an arthritis. Now, arthritis. Typically of the spine, ankylosing spondylitis is going to be the, the number one, meaning back changes. You're going to have lower back pain, and then they may do some imaging and find out you have ankylosing spondylitis, so like an arthritic change of your back. It's not a very fun one, but typically when you have ulcerative colitis, you're also going to see these arthritic changes. You may also see skin changes. There's two main skin changes that you can see. You can see the erythema nodosa. Erythema nodosa. Or you may see something a little more disturbing, which is going to be the pyoderma. Pyoderma gang, uh, gangrenosa. Let's see, I think I have room. So, if you do a simple Google search of these two, if you think you have ulcerative colitis or you want to be more familiarized with ulcerative colitis, I really recommend pictures. For skin changes, erythema nodosa, you're going to see these erythematous kind of nodules 
um, on the skin. Typically, they're going to present on the shins. So that's, that's kind of the number one clinical trademark. You may also see pyoderma gangrenosum. Really, there's no other way to describe them besides gross. Um, I'd recommend Googling it if, if you're not on if you're not eating dinner right now. If you're on an empty stomach, you know, it, it is kind of disturbing because it kind of looks like a really bad ulcer is how I would describe it. Um, you may also see some changes. PSC is going to stand for primary sclerosing cholangitis. So patients with PSC, up to 80% of them will have ulcerative colitis. So if you've ever been diagnosed or know somebody that's been diagnosed with primary sclerosis and cholangitis, you know, they may have an association with ulcerative colitis as well. It's just how it works. Again, you may see some bleeding, you may see some perforation, you may see some fulminant colitis, um, a lot of different changes that can happen with complications of ulcerative colitis. However, you know, you may also see strokes or DVTs or pulmonary embolisms, hemolysis, the list goes on and on. Big one, how do we treat it? The treatment for ulcerative colitis is going to be mainly topical 5-ASA, azacol, uh, as it's also known as. <coughs> uh, there are different preparations. You may see a topical ASA. You may see steroids. So <coughs> it kind of depends on the severity, the clinical judgment of the physician. Um, but again, glucocorticoids or the azacol.